Oh. Now you should be. Good, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Um, wherever you're at, uh, wherever time zone you're in, thank you for joining us for uh, this month's edition of the TV Power Hour. Uh, we're going to be talking about the S, uh, the TX8 and SX10 workflows in TBC with uh, street topo and structural applications as well. Uh, I am your very brief host, uh, Joe Bluck. I'm the product manager for TBC here in uh, Colorado. Very happy to have Arno Lesnick on the line uh, all the way from Durban, South Africa now, but he's based in Nantes, France, um, with a project from Yannick from Gioval. Um, and, you know, Yannick got a kind of a good problem on his hands right now. He wanted to join us. Um, but he is in the field. He's um, very busy with work, doing very similar workflows that, that you'll see uh, uh, Arnaud demonstrate here today. And so uh, thank you, Yannick, and um, of course, uh, Geotopo, our, our uh, partner in uh, central France um, as well. So Arnaud, if you'd uh, like to uh, introduce yourself, and I will turn it over to you. Um, I guess one, one thing I always forget to mention, if you do have any questions for this uh, session, for our no or for about TVC or really anything, please feel free to type those in. I'll get those in real time. And then at the end of the presentation, if there's time, we'll talk about them. We do log them so we can reach out to you afterwards. Or if uh, if there's some downtime or if it's really pertinent to what our no is talking about, uh, I'll ask them here live. So with that, uh, go ahead, Arno. Thank you, Joe, and uh, hello to everyone. Uh, so yes, I'm in South Africa today, but I'm based in France. I've been with Trimble for 21 years, if I can remember that far now. But uh, anyway, uh, so we did a project with Yannick uh, from Geoval uh, in the field. Uh, so let me explain the project. I just made like a few slides uh, about it. So the goal for them was to deliver a topographic map of a street uh, before road development. So basically, like in the field, uh, this is Yannick with the R10 and TSC7 and Jean-Yves uh, next to him uh, from Geotopo. So first thing they did for the workflow was to establish some control point, the triple R10 at the beginning of the job site, also like two at the end of the road, because the road were like 1.5 kilometers, so one mile for is there some Americans on the line. Uh, because the job has to, had to be like delivered into the French uh, coordinate system of the F93. So basically what they did after, I just took some photo in the field. Uh, they use those control point to uh, set up the SX10. And then what they do with the SX10, they use it really like a total station. So what it means, they collect uh, points for the poles, the place, the manholes, the signs, uh, even like the center line of the road sometimes, and the curb. But then every time Yannick does like a horizontal band scan uh, to collect some data uh, point cloud that he will use after inside TBC to extract uh, the information and use also like feature coding in the office uh, using the point cloud. And basically also they always collect panorama photo. I always told them when I was on, in the field with them, uh, it's free of charge to take photos, so please take photo. Uh, you can even smoke, I know it's bad, but it's a French guy, whatever. But uh, take panorama photos and to be used also like to share with his own clients. So like Trimble Clarity at the end, uh, he can produce a, a project in Trimble Clarity to share with his client about what he did uh, on the project. And then basically, for the first time, they asked me to come with a TX8, so Trimble TX8 uh, 3D laser scanner uh, in the field uh, because they wanted to collect uh, more data and sometimes even faster. So. The combination of the two for them uh, still into a known coordinate system, which is very important for them to be into a known coordinate system with a scale factor, because uh, they do lots of uh, linear project, so very important for them. And also uh, the ability to collect discrete point with the SX10, and uh, with the TX8, they can save a lot of time in the field, but still, it will always do uh, scan with SX10 and do, in fact, TX8 scan in between. And in the office, of course, uh, they use Trimble Business Center to process the data. So I will just explain like a few slides, but of course I will do like a live demo. 
uh, what he does always, he computes the traverse. So he's not using the traverse adjustment routine. He always use a network adjustment routine if a fixed azimuth. That's what they what they use, and then he can process the feature code. But now with the TX8, it's a new workflow for them. So what they do, and I think that's why they they bought the TX8 on SX10 because they can process or register the TX8 data inside TBC. This is very important for them because they don't need to use like a third party uh, software. Even Trimble Real works with perfect software for that. But for them, it was important to be able to do the full job into one software package. So one software package was very important for them. So they do a like registration with the TX8, then they do a like pairwise with the SX10. And SX10 will be like the reference, like the skeleton of the survey. And then they can approve some cross sections at different intervals for the client uh, at request. Uh, for them, it's very important to know the intersection between the walls and the road surface. So just make some cross section from the point cloud, and then they can create uh, CAD points inside TBC, or even use a scan to CAD uh, functions to create some point at a specific interval that can be exported to uh, other software afterwards. So at the end, they deliver like a DWG, a 2D version uh, to print on a 3D one. And then also a client requested the point cloud to be sampled and produce a DTM. And then the client can make profile at his will. I just take a sip of water, I'm sorry. And then they can also offer clarity export. Uh, people like it very much, actually. And then the second example I will show you today, uh, it was the second day that Yannick used the TX8, and he got a very good idea. He said, I'm going to do a small project. I'm going to survey a, a chalet in the mountains in uh, central France. It is an uh, inside and outside scan, <clears throat> so with the SX10, and also the inside with the TX8. So it did 76 stations on the TX8 in uh, three hours using the preview mode of the TX8. And he registered everything inside TBC uh, automatically. So that's the goal for this afternoon. I will try to show you all this. <clears throat> it's going to be a live demo. So if there is anything, please apologies in advance. That should be all good. And as Joe said, any questions, please uh, don't hesitate to ask. Yannick is not online, unfortunately. But uh, hopefully, uh, I can get the answer for you. So I just imported the JXL uh, from the field. Uh, directly, so I can just show you how it was. Uh, this is a project. I just imported the, the JXL inside TBC. What was interesting for them to see is that you get directly your coordinate system, uh, CC46 in France. You can see all the topo uh, that was made. So they use the SX10 as it as it's supposed to be done as a total station to do their survey in robotic and DR, but also do like some scanning and some images, so we can have a look in the station view. So I did all those measurements as a, for the curve, and they use like feature code. So in France, uh, they use feature code with, uh, with numbers, not text. But for them, it makes sense in the field, like Y904 means that code, a manhole will be a different code, and so on. So did the topo like this, I can just say hello to you. And that was me on the phone, so hello, everyone. And then, so what I would like to show you, uh, yes, what they like to do every time, and maybe it can give you some ideas for you as well. If I go to station one, for example, there's like a media folder. So they always do take a photo with a plummet camera. Always nice to make sure that the travels will be good, and if there like any problems, they know where to look at. But also, in front, they need to provide like a report of the station. So. He always take a picture with the TSC7 of the station setup. So when he makes his report to his client, he can do like station one and attach a photo to it on station two and so on and so forth. Just wanted to show you this as well. So OK, so we have all this. And now what we can do is to uh, do the network adjustment. I just want to show you the workflow he used. So you're going to do the adjust network. And he's going to do it uh, with an azimuth constraint. So from point 0.1 to point 0.4 in their uh, case to fix all this and adjust. So I'll say yes for this one. So that's the first step they do. So really want to show you everything they do. So it passed. So it was all good. 
I can just make okay for this. So next step, what they did, or what we did in the field with them, so we did like, a, as we can see in the Project Explorer, if I go have a look, we can see uh, the point measure with the R10, then the few photos taken, and then the different station setup. So four stations from one to four. And actually, uh, after the demo I was doing with them, they continued to finish the job. So I will show you the end result as well. So after they did some TXA yeah. data, so please. Yes, sorry, I just wanted to interject here. Um, what Arnaud is doing, looking at the imported files, um, can be really useful and kind of tells the history of what was done in the field within these files, you know, uh, very similar um, to the concept of the review job and Trimble Access. So you can see kind of what was done here in the field um, as well as um, as operations and, and order of imports from, from into, into TBC. Um, this data, we should be able to make this data available to you so you can uh, have a play with this uh, as well um, after the fact. So just wanted to mention yes. that. No, 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 thank you. I want you actually like, to see, you can see like which uh, measurement was you like backside as backside or not. So you can also make another one as backside if you wanted to. So you can change to go from station setup to resection and so on. So it's very important to always look at that. And also when you're not in the field, you can see what the people did in the field. Uh, that's very, very useful uh, tool, actually. Thank you. So now the import of the TX8 data. So as I said, uh, if you don't know the TX8, uh, basically you put a USB key inside the TX8. You make your scans. And at the end, when you get your USB key, you get a project into a Realworks format. But inside the RWI folder, it contains a TZF, which has a raw data. So basically what you do in TBC, you select your nine scans like this and you drag and drop. So I just show you with one and then I'll open a, the other workflow, sorry, the, a file I saved before. So basically it's going to import the TZF, uh, all of them one by one. Yeah, and while this is important, this is new functionality we added in version five into the scanning module um, on top of the uh, edition of these. Thank you, thank you. So yeah, it's just gonna finish that import just to show you what it's gonna be. And it's also important for me, for my experience, because I did a like, few projects like this, to always import US Extend first, <clears throat> and then import your uh, TX8 or TZF afterwards. Uh, I think Joe will mention also that with a new TBC5, you can also import some FLS, which are uh, format from the Faro scanner. Of course, it's better if you use a TX8, uh, but it can be done. And uh, it's better to always import the SX10 first uh, because the TX8 will basically move roughly in the, at the right position. Otherwise, you will have to try to move the TX8. So I suggest, it's just my opinion, my two cents, as we say, or as they say in the US, to uh, first import the SX10 and then your uh, TX8 data. So what I will do, I will just close that project uh, because to import nine scans, it takes like maybe like five minutes. So instead of doing that, I will, I save a project where everything was already imported. So just give me a few seconds. That's always a good thing with live demo. So I did a raw data imported. So where we got the nine uh, scans for the TX8 and three stations from the SX10. So also just for your information, I'm just using a, a regular laptop. Uh, so I travel a lot, so it's a very light laptop. It's not powerful. It's only like 16 gig of RAM. So I'm not using like a monster laptop to do my demo. And you will see in a few seconds on the screen, uh, you will see 600 million points, 600 million points uh, inside TDC. So just a few seconds, I can get a sip of water, which is perfect. So that's, um, of course, it's a big mess now because the TX8, uh, sorry, the SX10 was organized because we did like a travels. But with the TX8, it's like, everything like zero, zero, zero. So all the scan are on top of each other. So if I go to the point cloud, I go to display by scan color, you're gonna see like a, <clears throat> like a rainbow of colors like this. So first thing to do is to, first you need TBC with the scanning module. That's important also for you to know. And if I say anything wrong, Joe, please correct me. <laughs> so first thing we'll do is to go to register. Thank you very much. I'll go to register scans. And the first thing we'll do is plane-based. 
So it's what we used to do. So we just make automatically register everything. One thing you can do is to check which station you want to be as a reference. So usually it's always a good idea to uh, to level the TX8 uh, at least for one station and use that level station as a reference. So the process now will take uh, two minutes, two minutes and a half. But what's important also to see with a plane based technique is gonna is gonna also do like a refinement routine included inside. Maybe if you're like familiar with the SX10 workflow before, when you do the pairwise, uh, we will do it after. You can also do like a refinement afterwards. But if you do like plane based, you don't need to do all this. It's gonna be included inside the processing. So now we get like nine scan uh, and 600 million points that are moving uh, together to be aligned. So I really wanted to show you the workflow, uh, like a real life uh, example. Of course, for the next example, there are like 76 scans. I will not do it with my laptop. It will probably take uh, 30 minutes or 45 minutes to do all this. So I don't want to have you on the line just uh, looking at the screen and a rotating mouse for that. But this one will be finished in, a, in two minutes. And you'll see that the scan will be aligned, which will also offer, sorry, offer to create a report. And that report can be saved into a PDF format. That's always important to save, especially to provide to your client. Uh, it's not just a pretty photo or pretty image or pretty point cloud. It's uh, accurately registered. Uh, that's what's most important. So you can also see in the plain base that you get a note that on station from TZA for FLS imports can be automatically registered using the plain base uh, technique. Uh, the pairwise will be the one we do after because now we register the TZF of the TXA together, but then we will need to move that block, align it with the SX10 data. So for that, we're gonna use a pairwise uh, technique. I hope it makes sense for all of you. Hopefully it's gonna be finished shortly. I did it twice uh, last night. It took two minutes and a half, so hopefully timing will be good when we do the live demo with uh, because I think like a few people on the line tonight or this afternoon, so hope you enjoy. <laughs> Joy, yeah, and I know we've got a, but... uh, yeah, we've got a good Please. time to answer some questions. So um, right off the bat, when you were explaining the project overview, Robert asked, um, are you taking sort of a preview scan of each shot or each and then performing a full scan later? How was that work uh, performed in the field? You mean with the SX10 or the TX8? Sorry. With um, with both. Okay, so with the SX10, they always do like a they never do a full dome because it's outside. It's really like a waste of time. They do like a horizontal band. So usually the scan we do like five minutes. And with the TX8 uh, for that project, they did like a full scan. Uh, so like a two level two scans. I think it was a bit too much. For the chalet, the inside the project we'll see after, they did like a preview scan, and that was enough uh, to do like a floor plans. So hope I answer your question. It's always easy, you know, to collect data with a high density, but then your database will be kind of huge, especially if you do like a lot of setup. So I suggest you do like first few scan, analyze what you get, and then can adapt to your project. So now it's finished. We're gonna see, I hope I answer your question, Robert. And also, yes, I'm sure like Joe will mention at the end, uh, we'll provide our email address, uh, so we'll generate a report. You can also send an uh, email to us directly uh, if you have questions also at the end. It will be our pleasure to reply to you. So just making the report, sure. you can see all the scan aligned uh, in a few 30 seconds. But yes, discuss with Joe, I think it was important to show you like the live demo, how it is in real life, not uh, it's interesting. Yeah, you're always you're taking a, a bold risk take doing live demos like this, but yeah. um, with just a couple minutes, it was nice to illustrate with this amount of data how quickly the um, plane based registration can can be performed. Got a couple of questions here, um, yes. folks asking about um, with with the ability now of TBC to process and handle TZFs in in at least a um, in kind of a basic form like we've we're showing here. Um, mm -hmm. What does this mean for the uh, future of RealWorks? And 
Um, was any of this project done in RealWorks? So I'll take that first part. Um, okay. TVC and RealWorks are still very much um, separate products, and there is no plans to uh, change that anytime soon. Um, the delineation that we make um, between TVC and RealWorks, as we get more and more surveyors into this, quote, survey scanning um, workflow, is that uh, TVC is still very much focused on um, outdoor and topo applications and maybe, you know, like a half a foot or something inside the door, you know, inside the building, where RealWorks um, is really set up for production level scanning, where you're running hundreds of scans, you know, high density scans a day um, in an interior or potentially even an exterior environment, um, you know, and, and looking for things like, uh, you know, MEP applications and um, tank applications and things like that. So um, the lines are definitely starting to blur, but the um, uh, really the strategy is to maintain both products. RealWorks isn't going anywhere. Um, and, and to divide it based on kind of survey-centric, geospatial-centric uh, outdoor workflows in TVC, and then more of like the heavy production scanning um, workflows for real works. And then part two of that was any of this project uh, done in real works? Did you use real works at all for any of this? No, it was only done in TBC, and that was important for the customer, for Yannick, because they knew TBC uh, very well, and they were looking at buying a scanner, TX8, and for them it was critical to be able to do everything inside the same software like TBC. Of course, it could have been done inside RealWorks, but here you see we use like a, a code system, CC46, uh, with a scale and so on, and they do like feature coding, they need to extract stuff, so really TBC was the best choice for them in that case, but was, could have been known when RealWorks was part of it. And uh, RealWorks was kind of my baby too, so I would never say something bad to my baby. But TBC also is kind of my baby now. But, uh, it, it, can be, it can be done, but yeah, for that type of project, uh, TBC was the best. Uh, but you will also see for the next example, the chalet, it was kind of inside 76 stations. So like a, it's a big project. It's not like a small, like just getting like a room with two scans. And everything was done in TBC make cross-section, to make floor plans, make auto photo, to make the building elevation drawings and so on. So, but we're gonna see that in a few seconds. So that's a report and the report can be saved. Always nice to save it in Excel, PDF or Word format. PDF uh, maybe is, will be my choice myself. So having said all this, what we do now to process, this is just me. Uh, I like to close the tool uh, just to process. So we're gonna process everything now. You're gonna see the points will be aligned sorry, the stations will be aligned in a few seconds. So now you can see the road is straight, which is better. And if we go like in the plan view or 3D view. So now we need to align the TX8 data with the SX10. So I go back to register scans, and I will go to pairwise technique. So what we need now for the software to do, the reference station needs to be the SX10 stations, and the moving station needs to be the block of the TX8 uh, stations. It cannot be the opposite. If it is the opposite, we'll have to change that because we want the SX10 to be the base, the skeleton of the, of the survey. So now TBC, basically, uh, I know that some developers are on the line, so I don't want to say too much if I say something stupid. But TBC will be clever enough to put the SX10 into the reference station tab, and the moving station will be the TX8. Again, it's 600 million points with my little laptop. It's like doing the Tour de France uh, for my processor right now, a little bit. But now we can see the three windows. <laughs> and you can see reference station as the SX10, which is perfect. Moving station, it's a block of all the nine uh, TX8 TZF scans. So I could do automatically register a pair, but that will be like the previous one. So I want to change and choose different techniques because we're all here tonight, this morning, uh, to learn stuff. So I will pick a point like on the fountain. So also important, and I think it's fantastic, really fantastic. I started scanning like 20, more than 20 years ago, and I would have dreamed to be able to do what I'm doing now. I just need to pick one point in common between two blocks, and I don't need to be very accurate when I pick the point, roughly. And then straight away, TBC will start to compute the registration. 
In the past, I had to pick at least three points, I had to move staff interactively. It was fun, lots of fun, but uh, it's better to be fast and actuate than having fun, in my opinion. So next computing registration at the bottom. I'm going to see a report on the right-hand side in a few seconds. It's going to apply transformations. And it's going to basically align the block of TX8 scans with the, T, with the SX10 data. So just doing the processing right now. And then I'm going to see a little report on the right-hand side. It's a good thing because I can drink a little bit of water. And you can do the same if you wish. So don't worry, it's going to come. But yeah, it was really great for them to see that they can process data coming from two different hardware into the same software package. Uh, that was really a key uh, for them to be able to do all this inside the same software. And the uh, question came in from Keegan about the pairwise registration. Yes. Yes, pairwise is essentially cloud to cloud um, registration. Yes. Correct. And that can be done in real works. I think someone asked a question about real works, so that can be done in real works uh, as well, that process. So still processing. I don't know what's taking so long right now, but it's the beauty of a live demo. OK, done. So just change the position. We can see now red and green together. If you're not colorblind, it's red and green. Just because there is some guys next to me is colorblind, so I'm not kidding. Uh, so you can see all of this. You can see now if you scroll down the report, so like four millimeter uh, in uh, American units, it's still very small. I don't know what four millimeter is in a uh, US unit show, but it's, it's good, it's small. We're gonna accept this. Yeah, and then so, what so, I will... Yeah, and one good thing to do is to add to reference, so make it as one block, because in case you get like some new scan coming from different source, you want not that uh, those three SX10 and those nine uh, TXA data to be together as one block. So if you have to import something else, they will not, they will move as a one block. So I can close this. And one other thing I'd like to show you now, what we will do, we're gonna produce some cross sections because that's what the client wanted. Also run a classification of the point cloud. Uh, I don't know if you saw the classification of the point cloud inside TBC or real world, but that's really a fantastic tool that really changed my life, actually. Uh, I had to do segmentation manually for years and years, and it's painful. You now with a classification, it's fantastic. So one interesting thing I'd like to show you, uh, in case you didn't know, one cool stuff inside TBC, you can show a background map to look at your project. So always something interesting to show, especially to your client. Uh, let's say if you did that road, you can show them where you started and where you finished. So you can download the map like this of the project. But what I will do, I will select the project itself, go to the properties, and I will display some satellite imagery uh, to make it look a bit better, like digital globe imagery. If I just zoom out a little bit, it's going to just update. So nice little. Uh, function inside TBC, uh, I think very useful, especially when you talk with clients uh, about where you did a project, where you finished, and so on. So, nice little one. And also, you can you can also save that photo and export it to Trimble Access. But I don't want to do too much just here to talk about TBC today. So, I will stop with that one. What I will do because the classification takes like 10 minutes on my laptop. I already classified the project. I will open another project where the, everything was classified. So I'm not doing any tricks. I just want to set some time, the 10 minutes. Uh, 600 million points here, it takes like 10 minutes to classify, which is nothing uh, if you think about it, because if you have to do like one kilometer of road with uh, the noise from the pedestrians, uh, the cars passing by, the walls, the trees, the buildings, the ground surface, if you, want, if you need to extract all this manually, I think we can come back tomorrow. It will not be like 10 minutes. So, but just for the sake of the webinar, I just wanted to save 10 minutes, uh, or maybe less, because I need some time to open the project now. But I hope you uh, you saw the benefits of doing the registration inside TBC uh, with SX10 and TX8. 
And uh, yeah, it's worked very nice. And uh, those two techniques uh, between the pairwise and the register. So just opening the project again. Uh, sorry, I went too fast. So everything was already like a process, the feature code here. I didn't want to show you that just yet. I can go back to my plan view. So the point cloud has been classified. So basically in a Trimble, uh, Trimble Business Center, created some regions. So we get the list of all the scans here. So also the view filter manager, if you're new to TBC, it's a fantastic tool also. So with Joe, we talk about the project explorer. With your view filter manager, you can really filter your raw data from RTK, uh, level, total station, and so on, photogrammetry, even if you have images, all the layers you will create, and the scans and the regions uh, that has been extracted from the classification. So just went to point clause, classify region, and then it's just you select your point cloud, it's going to extract the class for you automatically. So fantastic tool, really fantastic tool uh, to be to use. And then what you did, Yannick, so all the points were like uh, it is some uh, some feature coding in the field. And then basically it just went to process the feature code. And then it created the lines, uh, the points, and the symbols for the trees and so on. So if we have a look up, oh, sorry, my reference station is bit four. So we can see also he continued uh, to do the topo by himself after I left uh, using the S extend and TXA. So kind of big project uh, that in one day. And the benefits also of feature coding. Uh, I don't know if you all use feature coding, but there's really great things to do in the field and also like back in the office here. So we can see the result of what he did. And now what we can do as well now is to make some few cross sections to show you. So we can go to the cutting plane view. Also, just to show that everything that TBC can do, I think TBC can do much more than all this, but we don't have the time to show everything, unfortunately. So plane, I will define a new plane, I make new one. I will suggest to all of you, uh, if you're new to it, to always give a name uh, that makes sense to your plane. Because there is nothing easier than creating plane one, plane two, plane three, plane four, and uh, then you don't know what it is. So. I think always name your plane will help you uh, a lot. So different technique to create your plane. What I will use is to make from linear paths. So it's new. Uh, so is that new in version five? Or I think it was in version five that this one came, no? It was version yes. four, yeah, version five, yes. So new select in version the... five. Exactly. So now I can select the axis of the road from the feature coding, so cat polyline. I can select vertical or perpendicular to the path. So I can make perpendicular to the path. I can zoom now in my cutting plane view. And that's why I like always to do just personal, always like to do the classification before <clears throat> because I get a color code now for the road and the building. So it's easier to find the intersection uh, because your, your point cloud has been classified and the software gave it a color by class. So it helps a lot. You can also see the topo uh, that was done or the classification, some of the points here. And something I don't want to do it now, but just to show you the option, you can make like subplanes as well. We can define the start station, end station, and you can make uh, station interval. So let's say you would like to do like a cross sections uh, every 10 meter or every 30 feet. Uh, and then you can also add a station. So if in between your 10 meters, you see like a zone of interest, you can add manually a plane at that location. That can be very useful uh, for you, like for example, for a tunnel project or even that project as a road here. So I will not do it for now here. What you can do as well, and I like it very much, uh, is the slider options. You can also like set the uh, slider limits, so where you want to move it along the alignment. So you can also move it like this interactively. That's always nice to show. Uh, you can even do a cross section through the SX10. Not a good idea, but sorry, it's not even funny. But and you get the road, you get the buildings here, uh, you get the noise. If I wanted to remove that noise from the car, I can just click here, default. And it will vanish, hopefully, in a few seconds. So that I get something very clean now. I remove the noise from the cars passing by and the people. And then you can several options in the CAD uh, menu of TBC. So lots of things you can do here, a lot. Even creating point using like different, like for the axis of the road. I was showing that yesterday, make a middle to 
of point to point. You can click one point on one location and one point on TBC will compute the middle. So lots of cool stuff to be done. And uh, what Tianik did actually was to just create a point. I use a feature coding. I think it was 190 is code here. And then you can also create some points uh, on the slice. Sorry, I will just zoom a bit better. Okay, this one is okay. Add a point. So you can create the points like this. And uh, also what I wanted to show, I think that's it. I can make another point if I wanted to. Oh yes, I wanted, sorry, I forgot to mention that the slice, the thickness of your slice can be can be modified. So you can see a point. I can show the feature code. Sorry. I need to change my glasses. It's terrible. <clears throat> show the feature code and you can change the thickness of your cross section. So if you do like a like inside a room or road, you can change your thickness. So that's in metric for our American friends or British 0 0.2 uh, meter. So pretty slick slice. What you could do as well is to I'm gonna try to do it. Uh, I can go to the still have some time, so make the polygon select. I can also select a slice, that slice, that's uh, interesting for me. And what I will do, I create a small region out of it, and I will go to the scan to CAD uh, option. So if I go to the point cloud tools, just for a few seconds, sorry. It's a lot of data for my little laptop. I can make a region out of it, if I can find my mouse. I will name it Arno. Don't give that name just for me here, a little cross section. And then if I go back to my uh, 3D view, I will just display, so we create a new region. It can be named Arno in a few seconds. And then I can go to the scan to CAD, sorry, scan to CAD function that's located here to create some CAD points from that uh, cross sections. And uh, I can also be uh, exported to a uh, third party software if you wanted to. I don't know, this afternoon is taking some time. My apologies for that. It was faster when I did my rehearsing. <clears throat> so yes. Live demo. Sorry? Something always happens. Something always happens in a live demo, right? It's not a good live demo unless Yeah, but you know is TBC is so good you cannot even crush it. Maybe I will be careful <laughs> what I say. But you get the point. So what is doing that? What I suggest to do is to open uh, the Chalet project. Oh, sorry, see, you got scared of me. He so said I would get get rid of it, but no. So just the Arno, I can just display it. Just my little uh, cross section I made. You can see it here. I hope you can see it. And what I can do, I can select it, go to the scan to CAD functions. You can make some sampling, special or random. You find the spacing always. I'm not a teacher, but I would say always create a layer. It's very important if you want to have to export this. It's going to be saved into layer one or layer zero, and then it's going to be difficult to find them to export them. So you can, yeah, just I suggest you create a layer myself, and then you can apply this. So it's going to create those CAD points onto my uh, my cross sections, and that's very very uh, interesting feature and very useful as well. So just creating my CAD points, you can see them now at an interval. You can see them in 3D view as well, so those CAD points can be exported also after. So that was it for my first example. I just got like a few more minutes to show you a chalet. I'm just going to close this one. I'm going to show you what uh, what they did with the SX10 and TX8 for a chalet uh, outside and inside, and then process or register everything inside TBC. So it's a small project. It's only like uh, close to 800 million points. So nothing too fancy for TBC. So let me open it. The other one just need to go. So I can just open you the project. I just put it here, I think, if I remember correctly. So the name is test, because it was the first test for them, but actually they used it as a produced result for the client. So I'm just going to open it now. So yeah, we got like Five more minutes, I think, for me, just to show you. I think just want to show you what they did uh, inside TBC only, uh, which I think is really, really great uh, to be able to do that today. Yeah, Joe, you want to yeah, take, say take your time, or no? We probably got. Okay. Yeah, we we probably got ten. You probably have at least ten minutes, but yeah, take your okay. time. 
Okay, yeah, no rush. I got a nice view in front of me, so I'm speaking of what TBC opens. My screen. So it's just going to open the, the final. So as I said, 800 million points, a chalet, 76 cans with a TX8, three yes ES-X10, and lots of topo measurements uh, made. Just to see, I would like to show you also uh, how you can display up. This is a bedroom, apparently. So someone was sleeping in the in the top of the. Okay, never mind. I want to show you that. Yeah. Hey, no, I got a I got a question. You said 76 TX8 scans and a, yes. a couple of SX10 scans, but only yes. eight million points. Was Sorry? um I... was that cloud cleaned up, or how did you how did you manage all that data, or how did did you all manage all that data? I just like I, like I did with the previous example, just imported the scan. So basically, if you look here, you can see there is like four S extent. So just imported the JXL, this uh, network adjustment, drag and drop, uh, 70, sorry, 72 scan I got here. So that's the name of the TZF on the left hand side. So 72. So just drag and drop the 72 TZF, then went to the register uh, by plane, register the 72 scans. But good result. Uh, it's of course to check the registration, use a cutting plane, and use a limit box as well. Always good tools to use to check the, because as you know, you can get a report. Report is always nice, but it's also also very important that you check yourself by doing cross sections or limit boxes to check the accuracy of the uh, registration between all those scans together. So everything was made simply inside TBC. And this was, yeah, this, uh, that's why I'm showing it to you because I think it's great, actually. And then did a quick classification. So with the punk law, you can see now lots of little cycles that all the scans. I think Yannick went a bit, uh, uh, bit too many scans, I would say. But what you can see also with TBC, I don't know if you know that, uh, we develop or they develop. I develop nothing myself. I just show some little tool like see inside visibility mode, but also outline. And outline, I want to show it to you, but I think it's great for architects or for you. You see, you can move your point cloud. It's doing like some uh, edge detection, if I could say. You can see now all the stairs coming from the inside, going to the top, the different levels. Uh, if I do like a side view, even went to the into the cellar. I checked one scan, there like some bottles of wine apparently uh, below here. And so you can see all your scans like this. So after what Yannick did, basically did some, uh, I would just call it a switch back like this to uh, no visibility mode like this. Just take some time with a uh, size with my laptop, but basically it went again to the cutting plane view to do like the different uh, floors of the building to extract some cross sections. And then could use those cross section to make some drawings for the building facade. There is four of them, so two options, make a cross section, and from the cross section, make some drawings, or use the auto photo tool. So auto photo from the point cloud, not rectified image, two different things, so auto photo tool was used. So basically, it's a scaled and auto rectified uh, object that's become like very light, and that can be used uh, to start drawings your building elevation. So I know that in the US it's not too popular, but back in Europe, uh, people do a lot of building elevation drawings a lot. So I can just show you what Yannick did here. I didn't do that project with him. That being a, remind me of Colorado. It's uh, in the mountains and central France. So I did some drawings uh, that you can see like this here. Uh, simple like that. Even the different floor plans. And what I suggest to do is to show you the result of the several DWG created and also good to see that uh, TBC can impose those DWG. So what I will do, I will open a new TBC, if I may. So it no, that, gave... that line work that you showed, was that um, created in TBC or was that created in a, uh, another package? And TBC, because Yannick used to, in France, there's a software called Covadis that's very popular. Uh, like every country has like yeah, uh, popular uh, software. But Yannick now really uh, believe in TBC and, uh, with reasons, of course. And he try to do everything inside TBC nowadays to do uh, even the drafting uh, that can be done inside TBC. 
uh, we could talk like for hours about what TBS can do for that project. So we have like limited time, but yeah, the drafting can be done also, and the drawings on the on top of the cross section can be done also inside TBC. So I can show you the DWG uh, that I got from him. I can show maybe I will just close that one. TBC more simple for me. Make a new one if I can. I think I opened something. I need to close it. I think my laptop starts to be tired. Just loading some views. Okay, let me open TBC. I will do like show. Okay, just going, ah, oh, because I click on that one before my approach is by loading all the points. Bad call, Arno, bad call. Okay, make a new one. Make okay like this, a blank one. I don't want to say what I did. And then we just basically I drag and drop my DWG inside of PC uh, to show you the end result of what Yannick did. And uh, I think it's very cool. So like a facade, one of them. So I don't have AutoCAD on my laptop, so I always use TBC to check my DWG or DXF sent to me by clients. So you can see like a building elevation drawings now of a facade. So it could be done from a cross section or from an auto photo. And then can be can use a drafting module inside TBC to produce like a printable format. So that was like one facade. Uh, what we can do now is to show you one of the cross sections, like the second floor. It's going to be in French, so if you don't speak French, if you can't read French, sorry, I will translate. Like the, the terrace, that's, that's easy in English. Uh, there's some wood that was deposited here, access from the stairs to the first floor, access to the third floor, uh, see the toilet, uh, the kitchen. So we can do like floor plans uh, like this, uh, using the, the data from the SX10 TX8 and with some orientation to the north, that's why it's a bit tilted like this now. And I can show you another example from a different facade that he did. Uh, let me try, I think uh, this one was kind of nice. So let's show you, I think, the power of TBC today, all the things we can do. So again, uh, and that's the three levels together. So the stairs, the bedroom, I have no idea how to translate that in English. The kitchen, the living room, some more bedrooms on top and uh, below the roof. So kind of nice, I think. And uh, I think that's it for me. Uh, I trust to do the demo of what uh, Joval did using the SX10, TX8 and the uh, Trimble Business Center version 5. Uh, I can go back to you, Joe, with a PowerPoint if you want. Yeah, we got a few minutes here. I've got some really good questions um, coming in. I hope you're going to get some very um, good answers too. Yeah, that's always the thing. Now I can now I can grill you live in front of everyone. Um, exactly. The question of um, requirements in Arnaud, actually it's great, uh, the hardware requirements on, on your machine. It's great that you've mentioned and that you're running um, sort of a run-of-the-mill uh, laptop machine to process yes. all of these things. Um, if you're interested in, um, and this was all real time, I mean, it takes a, a brave person to, to run some of this stuff live in real time. Um, obviously, you're well prepared. Um, but if you're interested in, in learning what, what Trimble kind of specs or specs <laughs> for hardware requirements, in every release note for the versions that we release, the current version is version 5, um, the last page or so will have uh, the uh, recommended or the minimum requirements. There is a separate breakout um, area for working with uh, point cloud data that you know we kind of bump up the specs a, a little bit. So I would encourage you if you've got questions, check out our release notes on our website. Oh, uh, um, now, guys. I can show that. Oh. Hey, look at you. Yeah, that system requirements. That last one. Okay. <clears throat> So we've got the um, system requirements for just kind of day-to-day -day survey uh, or construction type workflow on TBC, and then noted in the RAM and the process, I believe on the next page, 
um, something about the uh, hard drive, um, not so much the space, but the uh, read write speed, the SSD um, really mm. uh, improves the hard drive speed. And then the graphics card as well. Those are kind of the big four that we suggest to heighten with uh, aerial photogrammetry, mobile mapping, or scanning data. Thank you, Joe. I learned something. I didn't know where to find it, so thanks. I think for the person who has a question too. Um, let's see. The question came in twice, actually, so that was good. Um, are no just um, maybe for a ref or do you know this? Um, do you know how long it took Yannick to create the line work from the yes. uh, cloud? Yes. Let me, I got, I got some notes from him. Uh, and he sent me a report. He said 76. Okay, so he did like three hours in the field and to produce all the floor plans and the building elevation, building elevation drawings. It took him 12 hours. 12 hours. But the 12 hours in the office includes the uh, import of the 72 scans of the TX8, registration, classifications, uh, making the cutting plane, cross section creation, auto photo creation. So, and then all the drawings. So, 12 hours. So, it's like a 15 hours total with the field time. So, two days work. Okay. Answer your question. And first, first time for him to do this. So, also not too bad, I think. Let's see. Um, I guess I can leave you here with one question that um, Albert asks about the uh, scale factor done in the, yes. uh, the the job was done in, and I can just talk kind of an, an overview. And yes. I know you can talk specifically onto this project. Um, one of the things that that TBC is brings to the market that is really unique that we found is the fact that it can handle um, different scaled type of um, raw sensor data. So if you're working with the traditional terrestrial data, like the uh, TX8, for example, that Arno showed, that is traditionally in a ground kind of scale factor one, you know, you take a tape out and one meter is one meter. Um, whereas some of the uh, GPS or some of the uh, UAV data is, is kind of traditionally or typically in some sort of a projection, right? A, ground, a grid uh, projection with some scale factor. Well, one of the things that TVC uh, offers the, the market is the ability to integrate that data into the single project. And so, Arno, um, do you know that the scale factor the job was done in was set based off of the um, coordinate system used by the project? Yes. And that's, I just, I don't know if you can see that product bulletin that you, you did, I think, guys, about working with Point Point Flight Timber Business Center. The different scale factor with several scan data, the different scenario. Also, that's. Can you see, Joe? Yes. Yes. I think that's also to sum up what you were saying about what TBC can do with the different scenario of importing data and scale factor and so on. It's a good read. Sorry. Um. We've got uh, a couple of improvements in this in the works, and this document will be updated uh, as well. You know, this message of data hub and data integration, uh, not just with Trimble hardware, of course, we're advocates for our own products, um, but uh, third party hardware and, and things as well. Um, we want to incorporate that all into TBC in that single environment. And that's really the message that uh, I've been able to promote thanks to the, you know, the foundational work that's been done over the last several years, getting all these new features and scanning functionality into TBC. And so we're, we're really there um, with being able to integrate different data types. So really, really exciting. Um, I think that's kind of evident by the level of engagement here. I've still got probably a dozen or so questions that need to be answered. So thank you for your feedback, everybody. We'll get back to you. And then now I'm going to talk about, hopefully, Arno has stirred some interest. I believe he has, um, and resources and next steps, learning more. The uh, number one site for, or number one area of resource for TVC is our homepage. 
Um, we are now serving two markets, the geospatial and construction market. Um, we are, um, I'm more focused and as Arno is more focused in on the geospatial market. That website is quite easy to remember, trimble.com slash TVC. Um, you'll find things there like customer success stories, testimonials. Um, don't take our word for it, take you know, your peers' uh, um, word for it. As well as all sorts of documentation that, that uh, scale factor bulletin that Arno just showed is there. Um, white papers on the new GNSS enhancements we've made over the last couple of years. And then as well, downloading the latest TVC. I need to update that screenshot. It says 4.10, version 5.00 <laughs> is the latest. <laughs> um, our YouTube channel, um, while, while these um, hour-long power hour sessions are great, we are able to dive in a little bit deeper um, than a couple of minutes. But if all you have is a couple of minutes, we've got a very healthy uh, YouTube channel going. TVC survey is the name. We've organized these things into workflow-based playlists. Um, in particular, the cutting plane enhancements, setting along a path is featured in a video there. Um, the plane-based registration that our no showed is, is a couple minute video. So much more quicker to digest, uh, just a couple minutes of a great, great learning tool for you. The power hours have been a tremendous success. So these go back, um, we're working, I think we're approaching our four year anniversary on doing these. So there's about 48 of these things out there. They're available on demand for free um, for you to watch and consume at any time. Uh, we have gotten over the last uh, year or so um, the ability to share this project data with you. So if you'd like to play around with this data yourself, see how that cutting plane works, see how the, the new registration works, see how you integrate um, TS, uh, the TZS and FLSs from Faro into your TVC project, um, we will be able to provide that all through this archive website. The TVC community page we offer is a public forum. It's nice to see that there's much more engagement for users interacting with other users or really kind of building up a community, as the name implies, uh, surrounding TVC. We are in the process of merging the two geospatial and construction sites uh, together. Sorry. Oops, my apologies. No problem. And then some really new um, new ads here. Uh, we've, in version five, allowed the ability to create your own TVC commands via uh, macros and the uh, um, scripting language. Um, we've got a, a community set up for that as well. If you're interested in learning more, that is actively maintained by a couple of our uh, developers here in Westminster. And then a really nice uh, resource that's been new for geospatial um, that, that the uh, construction channel has been maintaining is TVC Retrieve um, with the concept of these learning tiles. Uh, Mike Karras does an unbelievable job and he is an incredible resource um, uh, for TVC, particularly from the SciTech channel and the construction channel, but it's open for everyone now. You, get a, you can get quick overviews of additions and modules. There's some paid uh, tiles as well, where he really dives in, you know, equivalent to these sessions, you know, uh, several, you know, an, an hour long on, on a given topic, their data prep, for example, corridors, um, a great resource for you now that we can offer across geospatial. And then next steps. So I think um, this was a very entertaining and engaging presentation from Arnaud. If you're interested in learning more, you can go to our website, trimble.com slash TVC, or just skip that and go right to the hot link there to download the TVC version five. Uh, we have a worldwide distribution network, um, our greatest asset as, as Trimble, to be able to serve the local markets um, much better and with much more detail. Uh, contact them for a free 30-day demo license. Uh, if you need a locator, there's the links there. If you just kind of find, if, if you see from the website where to buy, or you know, geospatial Trimble distributor, you should be able to find this page pretty easily. And then one more, I always like to tease the next Power Hour um, slide at the end of the previous slide. We've got our buddy Jeff Clark um, here in, in the central US 
uh, lined up to do a presentation on the relative positional computations. So this is um, developed with a specific uh, uh, end goal in mind, which be able to deliver the ALTA, which is a land surveying um, uh, organization and standard in the United States, uh, relative, pre relative position precision report um, and leveraging that through the network adjustment. However, um, with a global audience, and a global product as TBC is, what we're going to be talking about is really that relative position precision. So how points that didn't have necessarily observations directly measured between them, how they relate to each other. So this is a great general QA, QC check for you. If you have no idea what ALTA means or you don't work um, with, with the ALTA survey standards. So I'm really excited to have Jeff and we'll be preparing for that for Wednesday, May 29th. Um, so with that, uh, that's all I've got. Arno, thank you, buddy. A really, really great job. If we have any of your questions here, um, we will, we've got them logged and we'll be reaching out to you. Um, and with that, Arno, do you have any uh, last closing uh, remarks or send-offs? Yeah, please try TBC with your SX10. Or if you don't have an SX10, get an SX10 or a TX8. You will enjoy it very much. That's it for me. And thank you great. for attending. Yeah. Thank you, Arno, and thanks everybody for attending and listening. Hope you learned something, and we'll see you again on May 29th.